Good afternoon. It is Sunday, January 4th, 2026. In this update, a big, powerful storm system is going to develop in the Midwest as we go into Wednesday and Thursday this week, triggering the threat for heavy snowfall for parts of the Midwest, including for parts of the High Plains followed by a risk of severe weather as well for the deep south. So in this forecast, we'll time out who's going to get the heaviest snowfall, the strongest winds, and the severest weather with this upcoming storm system. Now, because I have a family obligation today, this is going to be a very short video compared to my recent videos on this channel. So I do apologize if I'm rushing through this forecast, but I'll do what I can to cover as much detail as I can in this forecast. So here's a look at the European model. First of all, timing out where this storm system is actually going to be developing. And right now, the latest model indicates that the system is going to develop over Oklahoma, northern Texas into Kansas as we go into Thursday morning of this week. That is the 8th of January 2026. And you can see where the system actually is here with moderate to heavy rainfall. Some pressure falls over the region, indicating that gusty winds are going to be an issue. As we go forward into Friday and Saturday, you can see that the system, or at least this lobe of uh, most energy, is going to be moving over the Great Lakes. And on this model, not much snow actually develops out of this. With that risk of severe weather along this stalled progressive boundary across parts of the Ozarks, that includes from, say, um, into Arkansas, as well as into Kansas, part not Kansas, but parts of Indiana into Ohio, as well as into the Northeast. And then that moves through, followed by a second lobe of spin and some energy here. And this would be the system that generates a little bit of snow, but much later here on the Euro compared with what I'm about to show you here on the GFS. With a risk of severe weather down there in Dixie Alley. And this again would be for Friday into Saturday. So something to consider for this upcoming week, uh, for the work week that is, that severe weather is certainly a possibility. Now quickly looking at the GFS model here, you can see that the system does develop a little later on the GFS, but also it develops this low uh, more sharply with more heavy snowfall on the northern side, we have this bit of a dry line cold front that is going to surge eastward with this warm front that is going to be draped across much of the upper Midwest into the Ozarks. This is going to trigger that risk for some elevated convection that produces heavy rainfall and gusty winds and, of course, maybe some severe weather with that. But it's really going to be in uh, when we get into Friday on the ninth day of January 2026 where this system does become better dynamic. That's where we have the best rainfall, some of the strongest vertical wind shear here. We'll look at the shear parameters here in just a little bit. But you can see here is that cold front. Here is that warm front. Here's a bit of an occluded front right in here. So out ahead of this is where we have the best chances for some uh, supercellular type storms capable of tornadoes and even some damaging wind gusts and maybe some severe hail as well. So now, what are the ingredients when it comes to this severe weather event? Well, of course, there's going to be plenty of moisture as we go into the middle of this week. You can see a, a, a bit of a patch of moisture moves through here on the, actually, let's use the GFS uh, for moisture for our dew points. And so you can see that uh, that first little uh, oomph of patch of moisture moves through. And then look what ends up happening. Air mass recovery takes place during the day on Thursday into Friday. And so what we end up seeing here is dew points that are in the upper 50s to lower 60s, even some mid 60s down here in Louisiana into Mississippi and Arkansas. And this is the more concerning aspect to all of this is the further south you go, more better moisture instability is going to be in place. And that's going to yield the risk for some severe weather for Friday into Saturday. And then that moves on through as we go into, say, Saturday into Sunday and moves into the eastern seaboard there by Saturday afternoon with those dew points that are going to be nice and high. Well, nice and high for a lot of you that don't like the cold weather, right? So let's take a look here at our bulk shear. Shear is another product that we use to predict severe weather in it. And we can see here clearly nice good vort max uh, moving into the high plains here. In the right front quadrant, we get southwesterly flow here. 
And so what we end up seeing is a lot of effective bulk shear magnitudes right around, say, about uh, 40 to 50 knots, maybe even up to about 60 knots in some areas. And this would be for Thursday night into Friday. And then really it picks up even more as we go into Friday afternoon. Look at the shear ve vectors over much of Indiana southward. We got shear anywhere between 50 to 65 knots, which is more than enough to generate some looped photographs. That means storm organization with some of these supercells, mesocyclones, be capable of producing some tornadoes and some of those could be locally strong depending on how much instability actually sets up with this now when we look at the 500 millibar you can see why the shear is going to be so strong is we do have this uh positively neutrally tilted trough here slowly going to become um, negatively tilted as this second little lobe of uh, troughiness dips down and so that's going to help to carry this kind of this direction and so out ahead of this is where we have that southwesterly flow Putting this now forward, you can see how that trough becomes slightly negatively tilted here. You can see by the height lines and the wind pattern. And boy, look at the winds out ahead of this trough. Really strong upper level winds and upper level dynamics. And when we look at the lower levels of the atmosphere, you can see winds here on the order of about 40 to 60 knots at around 5,000 feet above the surface. And so that's going to lead to a lot of speed shear, some directional shear here, yielding the risk for mesocyclones that organize and produce tornadoes along to go with some um, large hail as well. Now, by uh, when we look at the surface uh, wind here, south, southerly winds here. So we do have turning winds with height here, especially in the first one kilometer layer. It's where we have um, south, southeasterly winds to start off. But when you go up to about say four to 5,000 feet, your winds actually turn southwesterly. So you get curved photographs in the lower parts of the atmosphere, and that's gonna yield mesocyclone organization and strength, yielding the risk for tornadoes. One other thing that I wanted to add is how much snowfall will this winter storm generate? And there's a lot of uncertainty in the modeling, depending on what model you actually use, if that's a Euro or if that's a GFS. Based on the GFS model here, there could be anywhere between about 6 to 12 inches of snow in this narrow corridor stretching from central Kansas into southeastern portion there of Iowa, northwestern Missouri into northern Illinois, southeastern Wisconsin into central northern Michigan. You can see this corridor right here is where that snowfall is going to be accumulating. And that's why I wanted to make this video today in despite of me going to another birthday party. That's all it is. The last couple of days is birthday parties here in the home weather office. But I'm, a, I'm glad I was able to get this video out really quickly for you all today. Now, looking at the Intermountain West, snowfall totals anywhere between one to three feet, depending on elevation and location. Like the Northern Cascades here of Oregon, Washington, you might see additional five to 10 or about uh, two to four feet of snowfall. Sorry, I'm speaking faster than I can think here. So a lot of snowfall up there. And then over the Sierra mountain range, you can see anywhere between about one to two feet of snowfall additionally through the through maybe uh, through pretty much Monday and Tuesday, because after that, things are going to dry out significantly for the West. But anyways, if you found this video very helpful, detailed, informative and life saving on this upcoming winter storm for the Midwest and the Great Lakes, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that bell notification icon to get all notifications here on the YouTube channel. Please like the video as well. It helps out the L YouTube algorithm recommend this video to a larger audience. And please leave a comment in the section below this video, including sharing the video with their family and friends. But I do apologize to cut this video really short today because of family obligations that popped up without warning, had very short notice of that literally within the last hour. So that's why this video is much shorter than my typical videos. But rest assured, once we go into January 17th, I will be doing YouTube full time for you all because you guys are awesome. Love you guys and care about you all a lot. But anyways, thank you all for watching and I'll be back with you more soon with more weather updates.